I get asked about my sexuality and eating disorders um, like it's like my right and left arm. And in a lot of ways, I love that because I've been so incredibly open about it. And it's something that I, you know, really um, not enjoy talking about, but feel like I want to. I want to sometimes. I think with that comes being asked a lot of really dumb questions um, and uh, being asked things that make me uncomfortable and then having to like reroute in my head and be like, did I ask for this? And then I'm like, mm, actually, no, I didn't. Um, that was just ignorant. Um, so there's that. Uh, but I also think that like there's a level of there's comfort in community, right? And like, I think like when I, you know, I've been out for 10 years, but that doesn't mean that I've been out to like, you know, everyone in my family. That doesn't mean that I've been out to everyone in my personal life. That doesn't mean that I've been accepting of myself whatsoever. Um, and so I think like when I was very open about being gay, like publicly, it became a lot more um, fun for me to celebrate myself in that way. And it continues to. Um, it continues to. I think that we, there is like a ginormous like conversation surrounding like, obviously like I was um, latent, like sex was a college girl, she's a lesbian. And, um, uh, you know, all of a sudden I was doing like these interviews and people were like, yeah, how does it feel to be like a, um, like a face of, uh, queer culture or things like that or however they would word it um, and I think that it's really sick I think that it's cool I think that it makes me very proud and it makes me want to be better I also think that like trademarking like a white um, cis bisexual woman is like the pinnacle of queerness in media is really um, uh, silly and stupid and palatable so there's a lot of nuance I love being gay so much. Uh, I enjoy it thoroughly now at this point in my life, which I feel very good um, to say because I don't think you could have like paid me to say that like a couple years ago, maybe even like a year and a half ago, probably not. Um, but yeah, there's 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 nuance, of course, with with everything. Um, but yeah, I hate I hate being asked ignorant questions. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god. You know, it's like, it's like, yeah, like, let's like talk about it in like the way that is like, like moves some kind of needle yeah. or like is right. a human conversation. Maybe not a way to like get me to say something that you think is going to be interesting okay. online. Something. Yeah. Cause like, I know that like, I'm not stupid. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I see what yeah. you're doing, you know? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I hear that. Mm -hmm. So just want to double check. So Hopewell High School. Yeah. Northwest. It's yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that Northwest was you, was that your senior year or? I changed my junior year of high school. Okay. And you, did you play golf at both schools or? <laughs> I played golf at Hopewell. Do you still play? I do. I do still play. I played recently. Can't remember where. Oh, we were going. Oh, no, I didn't play actually. We were doing top golf on tour. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I'm like that's my. Uh, yeah, I played. I played in middle school and high school, and then when I moved to Northwest, um, they it was it was an art school. We didn't have any sports programs. Okay. I think that I come from um, two parents who are workaholics, um, to a fault, uh, for sure. Um, I come from uh, like small, pretty small town like South, um, where I felt very estranged, which um, says a lot, granted that I'm, at the end of the day, so incredibly privileged. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't know. It's, it's in spite of certain things, and it's also because of certain things. But I think, like, the biggest because is, like, I just always knew that this was what I was going to do, regardless. And I didn't know how or, like, why. Um, and I still really don't know how or why, just, like, with, like, what I you know, would like to accomplish in the next X amount of days or years or the next, like, three hours, to be honest. I don't really know how or why, um, but it will happen, and I'll make sure that I'm working hard to make that happen, and if it doesn't, then, um, well, actually, no, it just, it just won't. 
Well, and when you say that, it, it you do mean a, a being a pop star, right? That's what you're referring mm -hmm. to because it is interesting. Doing anything that I want to do. It's all, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. But you always envisioned, the, like, it, from what I've read, yeah. it seems like the singing was really yes. the North Star. Yeah, yeah. And everything else was like, I don't know. How would you just I, a cherry on top, I, icing on a cake? Or it was anything? it was just like a a welcomed blessing that was a means to get to what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. wow. Um, and I've been and I really enjoy it and I love it. Um, I've been called like spoiled. I've been called like I've been called like um like bratty and stuff like that. And I love when people say that to me specifically because like. Uh, you know, if, if somebody, like, if you watch, like, men in interviews talking about, like, yeah, like, I just, I needed a job, or, like, yeah, I just, like, I wanted to do this, because I knew this would get to that, and everybody's like, oh, my God, he's so brave, he's so cool, he's so cute, and then, like, when, like, a woman says it, or, like, a non-man says it, everybody's like, oh, my God, how spoiled, um, but I'm gonna keep saying it, because I do mean that, and it was a means to get to where I wanted to be. So you think it pisses people off because it looks like you are not a fully appreciative, mm -hmm. appreciative of what the other things were that were? Yeah, absolutely. Because if you're a woman or a non-man, and by the way, on 10 different f***ing levels, let's be clear, um, but like in my case and in like the body that I occupy, like if I'm not <sighs> bending over backwards um, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so grateful, I'm so uh lucky to have this opportunity and like really like kissing the hand that feeds me then i am um like a problem and uh, i'm happy to be that very well, happy to and, be that i mean you have always seemed to have this attitude that i think is yeah it's, i mean even the t turning down the touring you know for mm -hmm. like that took a lot of of, of course yeah <laughs> was it hard was it a hard decision no it wasn't. No. Wow. Um, I mean, I think in ways, absolutely, because like in my brain, all I wanted to do was get my parents to let me move to New York. And they were like, you're not doing that without income, right? So that's my first offer of like actual tangible income. Um, so yeah, it's in a way difficult, but it's also not because I really do have a certain level of trust in myself when it comes to work that I'm going to figure it out. Um, which is also a huge blessing, and I was raised in a family that, like, made me feel like I could do that, like, financially and, and tangibly, um, so I cannot sit here and say, like, yeah, it's just because I, like, work super hard, like, that's definitely a part of it, um, but I was also, like, really fortunate to have that, like, delusion of, like, yeah, I'm doing that. And that to be fostered. Of course. Right? Yeah. Of course. So when you were growing up, were you, did you take, like, were you in theater basically from when you were a kid or was that not? No, um, I, I mean, I started, I, was, I danced my whole life. That was like the first thing that I really did. I started dancing when I was three and, um, you know, I was always singing and like putting on little shows in the house and around the neighborhood and things like that. And basically just like taking whatever opportunity I could. Um, but then my mom, uh, was like, you should do like a musical. And I was like, all right, you know, I'm down. So I went and I auditioned for a musical when I was 10. What was it? It was Annie. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was very silly and very fun. And I was like an added orphan, which was huge dub. Um, yeah. And, yeah, so I, like, I started, I started doing it, but not in a really serious way. I did it as a means to like, A, for my parents to get me out of the house because I was very rambunctious and um, problematic and also to like be on stage and to be singing. Like that was the only thing I cared about. That was the only thing that I loved. Like I loved playing sports and stuff, but I hated school. I'm not a good student. Um, therefore also not like a great person to myself and like probably my teachers. Um, so yeah. <laughs> You're very thoughtful though. Why, why do you think you weren't a good student? I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I don't, um, I think that I don't deal with authority well. And I know that about myself. Um, and that's not to say that I don't deal with authority as a whole well. I don't deal with not being respected well. That's also not to say that every single teacher I had disrespected me. However, as a girl, in the South, 
with incredible anxiety and massive undiagnosed ADHD, couldn't focus, um, mental health was just denied and, and not a thing. Um, it was like constantly being disrespected and, and laughed at. And I think personally for me, like when I have kids, like if my kid is like, I have to use the restroom, they're going like, they're actually not asking me. I understand there's a different level of that for safety and teachers. And I really respect that. However, I never felt respected as a kid. So I always hated authority always hated authority that disrespected me and so I'm very wary of that now and I've definitely dealt with that in professional settings a lot and I'm sure that so many people have again on very different levels like I'm lucky to have agency over my space and my business and what I do now um, but I hated it and I did not want to listen to anybody um, and I still don't like listening to people that disrespect me and I really like that about myself I do think, though, that, like, my parents were raised in a generation where, like, mental health is not a thing. You pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Um, uh, being gay is kind of weird. Uh, being bisexual is not a thing, and you should pick a side. And um, being emotional is a sign of weakness. And women are um, to cross their legs and cross their T's and dot their eyes. And that is the thing. Right. So like in so many ways, I was so respected and also in so many ways, I was so disrespected. And I have always been um, a little fighter. I've always been a little fighter. I'm very uh, insecure and emotionally vulnerable. At the same time, I am very scrappy and I do not like to be crossed. And that has always been my thing. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of how I was. That's how I came out of the womb. Like that is just how I've always been in spite of everything around me. Mm, that's so interesting. Are there things you miss about the South? No. <laughs> I mean, in a way, in a way, like, I find, I find that I connect with uh, people from the South a lot, specifically because, like, there is a certain, like, ring to, like, Southern hospitality and, like, decency and stuff like that. However, I think, like, that gets manipulated in the South and used against um, people, and people use, like, Southern hospitality and, like, things like that to like excuse like hateful behavior and like homophobia, racism, things like that. Um, misogyny, uh, which is dumb, but I mean it in the most like pure sense of like there is a respect um, and a care for the people who are around you. And I'm like a big caretaker um, and I like people around me to be caretakers and, and care about how I feel, care about where I'm at, just as I would do for them. So I miss that. Um, and the food. Nobody makes good southern food like they do in the south. Like anybody out here is like, oh, we should go get I'm like, mm mm. So it's your favorite. I'm southern like, I'm not doing it. Um, well, I like just like traditional southern food. Like I'm trying to like eat like meat, collard greens, mashed potatoes, any kind of potato. Yeah. Like, mac and cheese, but not like mac and cheese that they have out here. Yeah. Like, I want, like, cornbread. I want, like, biscuits. I want, like, good stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I want, like, vegetables that actually taste good and not just, like, boiled broccoli that somebody made from Nevada. I'm like, I'm not doing that. That is disgusting. <laughs> People don't know how to, like, season. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so, I'm curious, like, when you look back at, and on COVID and everything that was happening in that time, mm -hmm. Would you have auditioned for Sex Lives had the pandemic not happened? No. Interesting. No. Um, I would have still been in my Mean Girls contract, and I wouldn't have been auditioning uh, Broadway-wise. Because um, I only started auditioning because my agents at the time were like, yeah, I think TV is going to come back quicker, so do you want to start like auditioning for some stuff? And I was like, sure. <laughs> I was like, I don't really know if... A, that's something I would do, like, because I, I don't think that's something I could f do. Like, I'm not sure that I would, like, get a job like that. I also didn't really know how to, like, self-tape or do things like that. But at the time, I had a boyfriend who, like, helped me, like, learn how to self-tape and whatnot. Um, and that always ends up biting you in the ass because the second that, like, a man, like, helps you do something and then you, like, do it well, they just hate it. <laughs> and it's like, 
it's so scary for them, poor baby, uh, and it's crazy, but, you know, respect, uh, it was just so weird, um, so, yeah, like, I don't think that would have happened, um, had the pandemic not happened, which is so, like, cynical and feels incredibly silly, like, silly to say, um, but it is logistically the case, Yeah, for sure. So how, when you look back on that experience, as mm-hmm. you're sort of really in music mode right now, mm-hmm. how are, how do you feel about that? Like with mm. I feel, I almost like hate saying like, I feel so lucky just because like, I know that like, that's what some like man in Denver wants me to say. However, I do feel that way. Um, I do feel really lucky and I feel really, um, grateful to have done the things that I've done to this point, especially because I didn't think that I was going to do those things because I didn't think that I just, I just wasn't thinking about acting like that. Um, I always thought that like, and I still do think this, so like actors are really, really intelligent people and you have to be very fearless. And you also at the same time have to be incredibly insecure to be able to get in touch with yourself. So it's this very like double edged sword. Um, and, and complicated, like, internal persona, I think. Um, so I've always really, like, looked up to actors. I've always just thought they were so cool. I just didn't think that was something that I was capable of. Um, so I'm really happy to have done it because I think I have learned a lot about myself. Um, I also, like, really am... I wouldn't say, like, I'm glad I got burned the amount that I did, but I would say that, like, I'm really proud of myself for how I've taken hits and burns um, behind the scenes and privately and turned them into uh, good things for me. And that doesn't mean, like, I've turned them into things that make me happy. It actually doesn't. It just means I've turned them into experiences that make me proud of how I've handled myself Mm -hmm. as a person and especially as, like, a young woman in the business. I'm... I'm proud of um, not taking sh- uh even though it makes me feel terrible for having to do it, just because that's inherently a societal and internal response. Um, but I'm I'm really I'm really proud of that. Mm-hmm. That's been my biggest like thing over the last four or five years. Is like I'm I'm not uh, I'm not somebody's. Yes, yes. I'm not. I believe you. Yeah, and I'm not going to be that. <laughs> a, it's, it's inherently the business, right? Like, it's inherently the business. It's inherently um, culture. I think that, you know, in a lot of ways, it's really, really amazing. And I think it's really um, beneficial. And I think that it's obviously changed the world in incredible, you know, like, like big steps. I think, um, I think it's also just like more damning and more exposing, which, uh, is also really incredible in a lot of ways and is really beneficial. I think culturally is really important, um, because everything is much more visible. Uh, I also think that with that comes like the opposite side of like, you know, (laughs) people just saying silly, ignorant things. Um, and it's, you know, I'm, I'm 23 and I see everything on the internet and I understand that the whole thing is like, oh, okay, well, you know, protect yourself from it, like give yourself peace, give yourself grace and things like that and like, yeah, for sure, but also like I think that's very difficult for me to do um, and uh, it hurts, like I'd be lying if I say it didn't like bother me, however, I think that resilience being one of my like words from this year is just like okay like if if that's what um someone is gonna think then that's okay and they can have that and if that's accurate then perfect you form your own opinion and if it's inaccurate it's actually not my job to um correct you because it's not your business i mean don't get me wrong i used to think about it all the time but at the end of the day like i am pretty myself Um, that doesn't mean that I'm incredibly confident. I just am myself to a fault. 
Um, and like, I'm not an actor first, so like, no one is gonna see me as that because that's not what I do. That's not how, and that's not how I conduct my business. Anybody in my life who has seen me as an actor first that I was in business with, I'm no longer in business with. That doesn't suit me. That's not what I asked for, and that's not what I'm working toward. And we mutually agreed to work toward the same thing. So if that's not the case, then good night. Um, that's not who I am. So you're not gonna see me as that. And that's just because I'm not gonna do that. Like, I'm gonna do what I want. <laughs> I, like I could be going through the worst thing on planet earth and like all I'm thinking in the back of my head is like oh this is what my next album is about I don't care if that's sick that's what I do like and I've I've had like with like ex-partners I've been with like you know <laughs> I've just been like like we'll be in like a blowout of an argument and I've been like babe I gotta tell you something like just out of transparency all I'm thinking about right now, and I'm telling you this so that you're not wondering why I'm like completely dissociated from the situation. All I'm thinking about right now is like what song I'm making from this. And I'm really sorry, but that that is what I'm doing. How do they respond? Well, I, I, anybody who I'm with or who is in my life in an immediate way, they know what they're signing up for. Like, you know, and I'm, I'm also, I'm not saying it in a way that's like malicious or manipulative or disrespectful, at least not intentionally. And it will never be that for me because I really respect the people that I keep in my company. Um, it just is who I am. And it's just how I'm wired. And that's like how I express myself and communicate. It's, it kind of, I mean, it goes all over the place. I think it depends on where I'm at. Usually what happens is I like think of a phrase or a lyric or a word that like sticks with me and becomes very... Um, like prickly um, I write that down and then I usually go in um, with Alexander and uh, we pick a sonic kind of palette for it and then we just like run and that is literally how it comes to be it starts off like very poetic like it's gonna be something that really sticks and if I don't have something that really sticks um, then I'm not getting a song I don't like to do stuff that way or if I get the song I'm not gonna like it like that's why I don't like I have a song too well that I like notoriously hate and everyone knows that I hate it and I don't mean that in like a uh, I hate that I mean in a way I like I just I genuinely don't like it I don't like it because it wasn't written in the way that comes from my little cranium to make it perfect emotionally for me so you are very you are meticulous in yes terms of tinkering and having, very thoughtful yeah it takes very a lot thoughtful to get that process mm -hmm. right from the prickliness. Yes. To the face. And it's very frustrating. And I have, again, really severe ADHD, which is the coolest thing as a writer because I have so many thoughts and so many ideas at the same time. Um, but I also am very anxious in the way that I control it. Um, and I become a little weird. And that's how I do it, I guess. <laughs> I think, well, the Carpenters are my favorite. Um, I think Karen Carpenter. It, I was just like, not, you can't really, you can't like put it into words. I also think like, not only is she incredible, but she's also like one of the greatest drummers ever. Like she had an incredible struggle with um, her own personal like eating disorders and stuff um, before she passed. And so I've always felt this like very cute like string to her. Um, I used to listen to The Carpenters with my dad growing up a lot, and then I like figured out that They Long To Be was then sampled and dubbed over by Stevie Wonder into a talk box, um, and then was that was sampled into a Frank Ocean song that's off my favorite album that I have a tattoo of, and I learned all of this later, um, and it makes me... I love it so much. I think The Carpenters is probably my, like, more surprising one. I also think, like, Steve Perry is, like, one of the best vocalists ever. I love Steve Perry. I love Steve Perry so much. <laughs> I, I mean, like, Journey was ugh, everything. Like, Dad Rock is a huge, huge influence to me. And then also, like, Heart. Like, I think, like, those sisters are incredible. Um... I have like a lot of R and B influence, but I always I always talk about it. Like I was I was so fortunate to grow up like listening to like 
music and like with a music business that was like honestly like just so like off the backs of like incredible black female artists um like I have always been obsessed with Jasmine Sullivan I think that she's a vocal bible I think that the industry has done her wrong in so many ways and she's just now starting to get her flowers which is another thing that I'm like y'all are crazy she's perfect um and like obviously like Beyonce is like the blueprint like she's everything like the 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 music that I consumed as like a kid um and as like a white girl in the south I was very 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 privileged to be able to listen to and and take inspiration from it it sounds like silly because she's obviously had such a like amazingly lengthy career already and has been grinding for a really long time but I think that like SZA has shown a lot of people up this year um I think that especially with like the SOS tour like I think that she's proven herself and she didn't have to yet like she did I think and like I've been a huge fan since I was in high school um and she was putting out like whatever I forget what that like pink mixtape is but like it you know I think that this was really her year um and she solidified herself as like one of our generation's like greatest musicians and also one of the most like powerful um people in the business uh and also women um it's been a it's been a big year for her and she's like finally getting her flowers i'm like thank god i'm like it took so long and for what um i saw frank ocean at coachella this past year and i think that um the internet and the music industry uh ripped him to shreds for literally no reason and to me that was like one of the breakthrough like days of my life this year was getting to watch him perform um at Coachella. Um I never seen him before and he's my favorite artist of all time. Um but I think that 2023 in my life was a huge defining year um from seeing him. Uh and from like witnessing somebody be so like incredibly vulnerable and honest and um uh thoughtful with their art and to like watch them get like torn apart uh was really disappointing and also really eye opening and so i think it's almost like a i mean it sounds silly but like that's like a that's like a breakthrough in my brain for him i'm like oh he just got solidified as the coolest and he already was for me